Hi and welcome to another video on the Technicide channel. In this one, I'm continuing in the series for systems. Now, if you missed any of the videos, you can check the iCard up here or you can check the links in the description below. Now, come with me as we go through this one. So let's get to it. Key thing, a parallelogram is a figure that has four sides and it has opposite pair of parallel sides. So all of these examples here are parallelograms. So you recognize that this side is parallel to this one and this is parallel to this one. So now let's go and discover this method for resolving a force system. So just as with the triangle method, if you have two concurrent coplanar forces, Acting on a body or a system in equilibrium, we can use vector lines to represent these forces. However, they are arranged tail to tail. So once this is done, we would draw parallel lines to the given vectors, as we'll see shortly, and the resultant would then become the diagonal. The direction is determined by measuring the angle at the tail of the resultant, getting to show you exactly what we mean. The diagram that you produce after doing this would be a parallelogram of forces because we would have created a parallelogram. The resultant and equilibrant can be determined by measuring the length for magnitude and the angle for direction. And let's get to looking at it. So just as the example in the triangle method, I decided to use the same question so that you could recognize that we could use either method to solve it. Now, just as with this one, you recognize that these forces are already arranged tail to tail. And so it would be easy for us now to just follow the principle to doing the parallelogram method. So the first thing we'll do is we are going to be drawing our vector diagram. So we have vector A here. So we can see that the magnitude of vector A is 3 kilonewtons. And so we are representing it at a scale of one to one. So it's one, two, three. Then we draw B, which in this example is two kilonewtons. So we have one, two. We then are going to be drawing parallel lines from A. So one, two, three, and you see it's the same angle, so it's parallel. And then from B, and there now we would have completed our parallelogram. Stay tuned. If you want to see this method using actual protractor and ruler, I'm going to be sharing a quick and easy method to do this. And then now the diagonal, as we see here, would represent our resultant. Remember, we must put our scale. So in this one, one unit represents one kilonewton. So if we were to determine the magnitude of this resultant, we would see one, two, three, four, and this seems pretty close to being a fifth unit, but it's a little bit short. So we know that this is at least four kilonewtons. So if we're making a guess, it would be about 4.5 there about. However, once again, we do not guess. You would actually need to measure the length and then state accurately the magnitude of the resultant. Again, the direction you would measure between the tails. So you would measure, this is the tail of the resultant and this is the horizontal. So you would measure between the resultant and the horizontal vector that is represented. And that would give you the direction of the resultant. Now, reminder what a resultant is, it tells you the sum of two or more forces. So in this one, we are saying that the sum of A plus the sum of, the sum of A plus the sum of B gives you R. And if you recall, this looks pretty similar, a resultant to the one we did with the triangle method, doesn't it? That's because it is. So now a reminder of the equilibrant. This is a force that is equal in magnitude, so it's the same length as this resultant, as well as the line of action, so it's along this same line, but it is in the opposite direction. And that is how you would know that that is your equilibrant. So if we were to look at, if we were to segment this diagram, we would say, okay, if we go along here and then here, equilibrant would cause a flow. If we were to go from resultant to A to here, 
it would also again create a flow. And that is your equilibrant. It is equal in magnitude and line of action to your resultant, but opposite in direction. Let's get into our practice question. So, guess what? This is the same question as a triangle of forces. Hope you didn't miss it, you know. But if you did, check the I cards and go and see what we did. Let's see if we'll get the same values for this question and this one using a different method. All right, so here is the CAD solution. So again, we'll just quickly draw our vectors. Please remember, if you create your arrowheads, remember that you should move it to the end of the line so that your line isn't longer than it should be. And I'm going to move this, not move. Okay, so now we are just going to be copying because this is AutoCAD. We can make our life a little easier. So, and then now I'm going to be drawing in my diagonal. Let me let me refresh your memory. The magnitude is equal. Awesome. So now let's investigate the direction. And I'm just going to put in a horizontal line. Remember, you should always have a reference at which you measure. Wow, it's 10 as well. Excellent. So now I'm just going to ensure that I'm proving that I followed the guidelines given by dimensioning to show that my drawing was accurately done. And there you have it. So if I could just borrow from over here. You recognize that I didn't even need to type this over. The answers were the same. So it's the same question. Remember, we have the barge being towed by two tugboats. Remember, we named this one T1, this one T2. And that was 30 degrees, 45 degrees. Yes. We're seeing that the single, the question then asks us to find graphically the single force acting on the barge. And this is it. It is 119 kilonewtons. And the direction in which the barge will move, and we're seeing that it would move 10 degrees to the horizontal. And for anyone who wants to know how I got the degrees sign in AutoCAD, I simply use the keystroke Alt and then did two for it. So there you have it. We just proved that when we have two forces acting on an object or a system, we could actually use any of the methods, whether we want to use a triangle method or the parallelogram. Now, if a specific method is given, then by all means, use that one. But for persons who also may be saying, but what if the force isn't flowing around? How can I use the triangle method? I prove that to you. All you would need to do is just to, to rearrange the forces, ensuring that you keep them in the same angle and magnitude and then you would get your answer to be the same. So that's it. I hope this video was super helpful and that now you are able to use any of the methods you choose. All right, so we went through that one and I hope you got it. If you missed anything, of course, you can always rewind and follow along with me. Now, stay tuned. There is still more to come in this series. So make sure you subscribe so that you will get the notification whenever I make a new post. Also, still sending out shout out to all the persons who've been subscribing, liking and sharing the videos. Your support goes a long way in helping me with this channel. So keep it coming and catch you in the next one.